If you're tired of all the cliché stuff going on right now, and want to explore the world of anime and subtitles, then this recap is perfect for you. It's another day at Anime Recap, and today, we're going to recap the 2012 anime film, Wolf Children. Spoiler alert, this is technically a sad movie, especially for young mothers out there, but we'll try our best to make it light and fun. Before we start, be sure to like the video, drop a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you dig the summary. The movie is also available in English, as it had a world premiere in Paris. But if you're the subtitle type, then go ahead, it's Daijo desu! Wolf Children follows the lives of siblings Yuki and Ame, and how their young mother Hana bravely raised them alone. Hana is a college student at a university in Tokyo. She's a young and positive girl who always smiles even at her father's funeral. Hmm, don't judge her yet. Hana means flower in Nihongo. And for the Japanese, flowers mean hope and happiness. That's why she lives by her name, even if she's already in pain. One fine day, Hana meets a rough-looking man wearing a worn-out collar shirt in class. She finds him enigmatic and probably attractive. Oh, Hana, still too young to battle her juvenile thoughts and emotions. Hana then proceeds to talk to the man, offering him notes and books in class. The man reveals that he's not an actual student, merely a bystander who's interested to learn. The man declines at first, but eventually agrees because Hana is cute. The two manage to get along well. Hana works part-time and lives alone in an apartment. She's had a rough life at the start, but she tries her best to stay positive and kind. It's obvious that Hana is falling in love with the man, but the quiet man is hard to read and doesn't talk that much. He works as a mover and gets to see different kinds of houses. One day, the man reveals to Hana that he enjoys seeing all sorts of homes through his job. He also tells her that he imagines one day, he too will have a home in a place where he can truly belong. Hana tells him that she wants to be a part of that dream, if the man would permit. Hana's sleek confession is so cool, it moves the man's stone heart. The man later reveals that he is a wolfman. Not a werewolf, but a mystical being that can transform into a wolf at will. So yeah, like a werewolf, but less scary and no full moons. He adds that he's the last of his kind, and that his parents, both wolf people, died years back. He shows his transformation, and honestly, <laughs> there isn't much of a difference. Hana watches him as he turns into an animal. Hana doesn't flinch, but surely she's in shock. The wolfman asks Hana if she would accept him. Hana says yes, and the two proceed to mate. Come on, Hana. Bestiality is a dangerous ground to tread. The wolf caresses Hana and kisses her like he's Bingo the good boy. I wonder if they did it doggy style. I guess she just wanted to be a real parent. Okay, I'm, uh, I'll just go now. Don't worry. <laughs> After that intense night, the two are now a couple and living together. Everything seems fine for the two lovebirds. Or should we say love dogs or love wolves? Anyway, Hana and the Wolfman are living happily together in that small apartment. Hana gets pregnant with Yuki, and oh boy, her pregnancy is difficult. She can't even get up without her morning sickness getting the best of her. She would sleep with a vomit basin beside her. Seeing Hana suffer like that, the Wolfman tries his best to take care of her. He would even hunt fresh birds to make hot soup for Hana. Hana gives birth in the apartment, with no medical assistance whatsoever. That's how brave and amazing she is. She even gets pregnant a second time with Ame. The family is living their best lives until one rainy night, the wolfman doesn't come home. Concerned, Hannah leaves home with her children to look for her husband. To her surprise, she finds him dead in the nearby river, being hosted by the city's garbage men. Hannah tries to get the wolfman's body back, but the men have already thrown it in the garbage truck for disposal. The scene is overwhelmingly sad and bothersome because after running around in the rain with her children, Hana doesn't get the chance to bury her husband properly. Gee, you would shed a tear. If you don't, then, then you're mean, and, and you deserve to cry. <laughs> Moving forward, Hana is left alone to tend to the wolf kids. Yuki and Ame are now growing up and both require extra attention. Yuki is more of the animal type, always gnawing and biting, always aggressive and hyper. Ame is the timid one. He doesn't like going around like a little puppy, more so being called a wolf. Hana had to give up her part-time job to focus on her children. It seems her husband left her some money, so she's fine being a full-time housewife for now. Her apartment is now a mess since the children would gnaw on the furniture, run around like rabid dogs, and scratch on almost every surface. Hana endures all of it because she loves her children. 
One day, Yuki accidentally gobbles a pack of silica gel. Hana finds her on the floor with a bubbling mouth. She quickly decides to get emergency care for her. Unfortunately, she struggles if she should bring Yuki to the vet or the pediatrician. She later finds out that consuming silica will not harm her daughter. So luckily, Yuki is alright. She even has her usual massive appetite back. As the days pass, the neighbors complain about Hana's supposed dogs and Ame's inconsolable cries. Hana is so exhausted, but she still tries her best to be a good mother. Ame's cries would wake everyone up and bring the children to the park where Yuki can run around like a wild dog and Ame to cry himself to sleep. The social services visit Hana and tells her that the agency will get the children because of neglect. Yuki and Ame aren't vaccinated because Hana doesn't know which vaccine would be right for the two. She should at least give them an anti-rabies shot, right? Hana decides to move to the countryside to avoid the watching eyes of society. She moves to a remote mountain, similar to the wolf man's childhood place. She buys an abandoned house and starts planting crops. The money that the wolf man left them is almost gone, so she needs to think of ways not to starve. She meets a bunch of local people, farmers and one grumpy old man. The old man may look cold and apathetic, but deep down he's a softie. He teaches Hana how to properly plant crops, and even gives her a sack of potatoes that she could plant and share with the rest of the community. Not only that, the old man gives her a bigger refrigerator. The townsfolk think that the old man has a crush on Hana, but he's just paternal. The wolf children are now growing up, and Hana decides to enroll them in school. Yuki enjoys school life with her friends, but Ame hates it. Hana also teaches Yuki a chant so she can stay human in school. I'm gonna be a little girl, all the way home. The wolf children are now starting to choose which life they would prefer, human or wolf. Hmm, I don't know, I'm not exactly a fan of being on all fours all the time. Then again, being able to sniff someone from miles away is kind of handy too. Moving on, Yuki meets a nice boy named Sohei. Sohei asks Yuki if she has a dog because she smells like one. Whoa, calm down boy. Yuki gets offended and hurt, so she distances herself from the crowd and Sohei. Um, hello? Deodorant? Ever heard of that girl? Sohei notices Yuki's abrupt personality change and asks why she's being like that. The boy nags until Yuki has had enough. She unintentionally turns into a wolf and claws out Sohei's ear. Sohei's Karen mom threatens Hana that she will sue. She's a bit scary considering her lavish necklace. Sohei later claims that it wasn't Hana who hurt him, but a wolf. Yuki cries out loud as she apologizes to her mother. Hana comforts her and tells her that everything will be fine. After days of being absent from school, Sohei decides to visit Yuki every day and bring her notes and snacks. That sweet boy likes Yuki, and Hana knows it. Hana asks Sohei if he hates wolves. He says he likes them, and he thinks that wolves are cool. Hana smiles and liked the boy even more. Hana applies for a job at the town's conservation facility. However, her real intention is to meet the lone wolf inside the facility. She asks the wolf for advice on how to raise wolf children. But the wolf doesn't respond, of course. They later found out that the wolf never lived in the wild. A disappointment for Hana, but a spark of interest for Ame. Ame nearly drowns in a river one winter day when hunting a kingfisher. But Yuki saves him and Ame gains confidence in his wolf powers. While Yuki is enjoying her life as a human, Ame starts going to the mountain to meet other animals. He meets an elderly fox who he treats as his sensei. The fox teaches him all the ways in the wild, making him a stronger and wiser wolf. Ame brings his mother to meet the fox. Hana is amazed by how her son has grown stronger. She thanks the elderly fox and gives him treats. Despite Hana's request not to go to the mountains anymore, Ame wants to become a wolf. He's changed from the young timid boy to a confident wolf man, just like his father. Yuki and Ame fight over whether they're human or wolf, especially after Yuki forces Ame to start going back to school, to which he refuses. The two fight like wild animals, and Hana can't do anything to stop the rabid children. Yuki retreats into the bathroom crying, while Ame stands up as if he's won the battle. Now, who would clean this mess? Two years later, a fierce storm gathers, and Yuki's school is let out early. As Hana is about to leave to pick her up, Ame disappears into the forest to help his dying fox teacher, so she follows him. While Hana is risking her life to save her son Ame, Yuki spends time with Sohei while everyone is picked up by their parents. Yuki shows Sohei that she can transform into a wolf, and it was her who attacked him. He tells her he already knew and promises to keep her secret. 
Uh, isn't romance a bit too early for 12 year olds? Hana stumbles and falls down a cliff while looking for Ame. She experiences a vision of the children's father, who informs her that Yuki and Ame will follow their own paths in life, since she's reared them well. Ame finds Hana and brings her to safety. When she awakens, Ame has fully transformed into an adult wolf and has fled into the mountains. She takes his farewell cheerfully yet emotionally, realizing that he has chosen his own way. Yuki leaves home a year later to live in a middle school dormitory. Ame's wolf howls may be heard throughout the woodland. Hana, who's now living alone, recalls how rearing her wolf pups was like a fairy tale, and she's glad to have done it. I told you this movie would get you emotional. Now go wipe those tears and watch the movie if you haven't yet. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.